Hey there, welcome to Drive. My name is James Deacon, coming at you from Balungao in Pangasinan because we are celebrating the great outdoors episode and more importantly, the cars that can get you out here to enjoy all of this. That's right, it's all about 4x4 mudslinging fun as we feature some of the greatest SUVs ever built. It's 2015 model Jeep Wrangler Rubicon and we drive it up to the Balungao Hilltop Adventure just to see what the car is capable of. Also, we have a review on one of the best-selling seven-seater diesel SUVs SUVs in the country. It's the newest variant of the Chevrolet Trailblazer. And we also hook up with the Club Overland, one of the most hardcore car clubs and 4x4 clubs in the country out of Angeles City. All that and more is coming up, including 4x4 accessories, what to take on your adventure. But right now, let's kick things off with the iconic FJ Cruiser. Well, it took about 22 years after the last FJ was built in uh, 1984 for them to come up with a revival model. But finally, it's here. But you know what? It's only been recently where the Philippines has sold it officially through TMP. So we've got our hands on the FJ Cruiser right now. It is an iconic vehicle. Uh, it should be in our iconic car section. But right now, let's just give it a full review first. Um, if you're looking for an SUV, something very capable, this thing here, is just the ticket. I mean, it is, it's the heritage of this car alone. Uh, just screams four by four. I mean, they, they are arguably one of those who sort of invented it. You got Land Rover, you got the Willys Jeep. I mean, all of them can sort of lay some kind of claim to being king of the mountain. Now, this car itself, as a revival model, of course has softened up quite a lot over the years. So it's designed to sort of bring it back, but you know, take away the harshness and stuff that sort of made it uh, a proper FJ. So they've shoved in a V6 engine, four liter, uh, good for about 260 horsepower. Very, very good this time because it's got the variable valve timing, the VVTi of Toyota. The first generation of this didn't. Actually, it's a surprising motor because for something so heavy and uh, with all the aerodynamics of a three-bedroom home, this thing actually accelerates quicker than a lot of compact sedans out there. It's rapid. For what it is, it's actually very, very impressive. More than what you bargain for, basically. If you picture a fridge traveling down the road at 120 kilometers an hour, uh, that's the sort of uh, surprise that you'd get from this car. So um, I was blown away with its on-road performance, acceleration, the power, even the high-speed stability and cruising. We've been off-road for a little while here and uh, nothing too heavy. The whole feel of the car is very, very American. And by saying that, usually American cars are known to be soft, cushy, the steering is very numb, but it's a good feel. It's a comfortable feel. You've got to look at the history of the Jeep in general. You had the Willys Jeep, you had this Jeep. Um, they sort of came around sort of well, not the same time, but there was an era there. So I don't know, I guess it is as much American as it is Japanese. The only trade-off for that, cruising at comfortable speeds, is this thing, well, I think this thing drinks more than the Rolling Stones did on tour. It is thirsty. I mean, it loves its premium stuff. And uh, you can almost hear it, you know, licking its lips as it sucks down that fuel. This, this thing's got a drinking problem. Um, it, it, it's, it needs a 12-step program, I don't know. Going around these bends like that, that's what you're sort of, that's the trade-off for it. Look at that. Just These roads are just horrible, but it's just like flattening them out. It's like a steam iron. You know, you're like ironing out all the wrinkles of the road. It's great. It would be disrespectful to the entire line of the FJ if you were just to lock this up or keep it in an urban setting and uh, be a city slicker. Some of the key features that uh, made the FJ stand out like this windscreen here, which is almost vertical. It's almost just like a straight drop. 
they've kept that. Very good for visibility, horrendous for aerodynamics. Also, they kept the three windscreen wipers here, so it, it, it covers a big surface area. Because of the design of the windscreen, they had to do that. Then you have this, this very bulky, but yet visually it, it, it works with the car. This uh, compass, of course, you got your outside temperature and the the incline meter here so you can sort of see where you are although it, it's pretty useful for off-road for day-to-day -day stuff the only thing really i mean if, if there are complaints obviously the fuel consumption not as strongest point also the interior while i don't mind it being bare because this is what it's designed to do the stereo is just a little too basic. I mean, this is something you would probably take out and replace immediately with an aftermarket unit. Not because it doesn't sound great, it, it sounds okay. And you can pair your phone with it. It just doesn't seem to stream Bluetooth. Well, it's, it's improved in every way, except if I was going to suggest an improvement to Toyota, I think there are some areas I would like a bit more driver information, uh, fuel consumption, real time, um, bits and pieces. We see this in, we got used to it in every other car with these multimedia displays place so I'd like to see that somewhere in the car um, and if they could keep it looking retro that would be even better um, and the stereo the stereo needs either Bluetooth streaming or a USB or something to be able to sort of listen to your music uh, that, that we listen to it nowadays it's never on a CD anymore Some of the other design features I do like is, uh, I, I, this is kind of cool. I mean, you've got the this cubby holder here, which is great. It's like another dash uh, uh, glove box for you, but it's right in a great position. I put my wallet in there. Um, you know, you pay your toll and stuff like that. It's all handy pulling through the drive through it's, it, That's really good. You've also got some nice cup holders, which are in a good position here, very ergonomically placed, and uh, cubby holders everywhere. So you can sort of bring all the fast food you want and all the stuff in the car, and it just sort of swallows it all up. So really the only thing missing I think right now, it, it performs beautifully on the road, uh, surprisingly beautiful actually on the road, but uh, it won't be an FJ if it can't perform off the road. So this is a true test coming up. This is where the incline meter actually comes in handy. Oh, there we go. We're losing some traction now. Yeah, baby. So you can feel it actually being held back by the tires. Yep, so you can feel sort of, okay, I'm lo I've lost traction there in the back. You can feel that the, it's only being held back by the tires because it's, we're running on street tires right now. Yep, I can definitely say that this is a very capable machine. Mechanically, it's, oh man, this is really, really, oh wow, wow, that's, that's big. You should see the incline. The incline we're doing right now is pretty insane. <laughs> oh yes, oh wow, oh this is good. Well, that's a hell of a ride. I mean, whew, talk about iconic. This FJ Cruiser, well, it first came out in 1960. Now, when they did the revival of it, they kept all the design features. Um, basically, the grille is uh, very important. The very upright windscreen here is almost vertical. The white roof, all the way back to the wraparound glass here in the back. So it just creates this whole nice effect. This is very, very FJ. Now, a unique feature of this, you've probably already seen this, but if you haven't, freaks the kids out all the time. Come here, check this out. So it looks like a two-door, but... Uh, you gotta love that. I mean, it's, it's called a suicide clamshell type of door. So you put that there, that's pretty cool. Another iconic feature that it was so, they were going so retro, they were able to convince Toyota to keep the word Toyota on the grill rather than the emblem and the logo of Toyota, which you see in all modern day cars. And so you also have these wonderful side mirrors here with the, uh, assist lamps and uh, all in all I think it's just they've done a terrific job of reviving it and still keeping the character of the car. 
one of the best value SUVs out there at just under 1.8 million bucks. You can have so much fun in that. And it certainly gets the stairs. That's the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Coming up after the break, we'll show you how to actually use your 4x4 the way God intended it to with the Club Overland in Angeles City. 